My name is Doreen Apia. I am a staff of AFLIA. A few years ago, information and data on libraries in Africa, especially community and public libraries, was limited, if not to say was not available at all. This became a burden for the executive director and management of AFLIA. And as the only Continental Library Association saw the need to address this problem. In AFLIA's quest to address this problem and make libraries more visible for development, AFLIA partnered with Tasha on the project known as Advancing Library Visibility in Africa. And this project has been ongoing for some time now. Here we are today, there are a lot of champions across Africa who are aware of this project and they have um, contributed in, to this project in various ways. But we are here this afternoon for a simple tax to launch the new library sites platform developed in 2022 with the capacity to collect and host data about libraries in Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, with me here this afternoon, we have the Executive Director of AFLIA, Dr. Helena Asamoa Hassan, who is also the Board Chairperson of the Ghana Library Authority and the Secretary General of UNESCO's Memory of the World African Chapter, here with us this afternoon to launch this new platform. Ma'am, you are welcome. We also have with us from the Tasha side, Chris Joyce is a senior research scientist with the Technology and Social Change Group, Tasha, at the high school of the University of Washington, Seattle. He has worked with public libraries and played several roles in projects focusing on data, technology, and impacts. He's well experienced. Chris holds a BA in history from the University of Oklahoma and Master's in Library and Information Science from the University of Michigan. He is currently the leader of the TACHA team implementing the Advancing Library Visibility in Africa project with AFLIA. Chris, you are welcome. We also have with us Stanley Boachi, a champion. He is no, he's not a new person. You all know him, who is the research coordinator on this project. Stanley, you're welcome. And we have with us here from AFLIA side, we have Michael Thompson, the IT officer. I would like to also acknowledge all the champions, both present and those who are not yet um, doing the work. We have 28 countries on this program. And so we have 28 champions. I'll mention their names quickly and then acknowledge them for the good work they have done and are still doing. We have from Algeria, Adele Gazelle, Angola, Diana Afonso, Beni, Kofi Bedo, Botswana, Lingibro, Burkina Faso, Nabi Seydou, Cameroon, Haruna, Ahmedou Yeremi. Central African Republic, we have Felipe Bokola, Cote de Côte d'Ivoire, Junior Atreman, Egypt, Dr. Heba Mohamed Ezwatini, Dr. Momsa Matabela, Ethiopia, Mezime Gema, Gabon, Estela Obi Ntotome, Ghana, Beatrice Ampedu, Kenya, Purity Kavuri, Lesotho, Mapasani, Lefoto, Malawi, Hebre, Nyali, Mali, Soguba, Suleimana, Mauritius, Ramesh Rahu, Morocco, Ramone Badia, Mozambique, Edito Ernesto, Namibia, Sarah Negumbo from Nigeria. We have Dr. Victoria Okoje, Senegal, Tienu Kanji, Sierra Leone, Don Stanet, Davis, Tanzania, Sumo Mubi, Uganda, Katrin Amia, Zambia, Sharon. Moisha and Zimbabwe, Antonetta Mozimu. Ladies and gentlemen, you are all welcome to today's program. I would like to welcome the executive director to give us the purpose of 
the gathering of this meeting. And Loma, please, you are welcome to take over. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, colleagues. Good afternoon, Chris. Uh, I think it's good morning, something like that. Not really high up. I really want to welcome everyone to the launch of the African Library Sites platform. Uh, this is an exciting moment for us as we adore this important platform as part of AFLIA's several efforts to support libraries and promote library visibility and impact in Africa. Libraries, we all know, are the cornerstone of many communities, providing access to knowledge, information, and resources that support education, research, and personal growth. They play a critical role in promoting literacy and learning, and in helping people to build the skills and knowledge they need to succeed in today's fast-paced and ever-changing world. Ladies and gentlemen, the African Library Sites platform is a testament to AFLIA's commitment to these important values enumerated above, and to our belief in the power of libraries to transform communities and change lives. By providing a centralized and accessible platform for libraries in Africa, we are making it easier for people to find and connect with libraries and to access the information and resources they need to grow and succeed. I urge all library stakeholders, and in this I will specifically talk about national libraries, national library associations, library consortia, community library association, and indeed all library types to embrace, contribute to, and adopt this platform as a key resource for data-driven advocacy and decision-making. I emphasize on embrace and contribute to. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for providing the funding for this project and the Technology and Social Change Group of the University of Washington, our partners on this project. That is on the project called Advancing Library Visibility in Africa, ALVA for short, for this feat that we've been able to achieve. Without funding, it will have been difficult and we will forever be grateful for, to Bill and Belinda Gates for providing the funds for this project to come on. AFLIA also appreciates the national libraries and country champions who have collaborated with us on the project since 2017. And to everyone who has worked so hard to make this platform a reality. Your dedication and passion are an inspiration to us all. And I'm confident that this platform will help to drive meaningful change and impact in African communities for many years to come. I thank you. Thank you very much. Our uh, mommy, God bless you. Dr. Inkem Osigwe is also in our midst here, Doc, you are welcome. The next voice you hear is Chris Joasis. Chris, you are welcome, kindly take over. Thank you, Doreen. So uh, hello and welcome to everyone. Excited to have you all here this afternoon or evening. Um, I think I may be the only person who it's the morning for. So my name is Chris Joasis, and uh, I'm a senior research scientist at the University of Washington. Um, in the information school here in Seattle, Washington. I work in a research center called the Technology and Social Change, or TASHA, um, group. So as mentioned, I've been working on the ALBA project for quite some time, and I'm very excited to see the tremendous amount of progress um, that we're culminating here in the launch of the African Library Sites platform. Um, as mentioned previously, this would not have been possible without the continued involvement and generous sharing of expertise of a large group of people from multiple countries. And so I really wanted to start with an acknowledgement of all of the assistance that many people have provided to the project over its existence. Um, this includes AFLIA staff, past and present, um, the country representatives for the project, the champions, um, and the many participants um, from uh, many libraries uh, in project meetings, 
um, who've responded to our surveys and those who have also answered our various inquiries about libraries in their countries um, to help us as we worked on this project to understand the overall library environment. Um, so today, what I'm going to do is try to provide an overview of some of the major activities and milestones of the ALVA project to date and how those activities related to those milestones um, have informed our efforts and gotten us to this point. Um, so the, the genesis, the beginning of this project was really from a meeting um, of an advisory board of library leaders from the African continent um, who were working in collaboration with other partners, including our organization, Tasha. Um, and a key item that uh, out of the many things that this group identified as a challenge to um, building and sustaining support for library organizations across the continent was the lack of data about libraries, as Doreen, Doreen mentioned um, in her introduction, especially as it relates to public or community libraries. Um, so related to this challenge was also um, an opportunity that this group saw to increase um, the understanding of what data could be useful for helping libraries being viewed as potential partners in development efforts at a uh, local, national, or regional perspective. So uh, ALPA was born from these discussions. And uh, after further planning, we came up with two uh, complementary work streams um, that both focused on collecting data and also understanding how it could be put to use to support libraries. Um, so one of the first efforts that we undertook to under, understand um, and address the overall lack of data um, was, be, was to begin to assemble as much information about the environment um, in each country uh, in regards to libraries. And this was our first attempt at also trying to identify the various uh, or organizational and governance structures in each country for public libraries. Um, so this resulted in the publication of, of what we refer to as our landscape report in 2018. Um, and this was a useful resource for our team as we tried to understand the scale of potential data collection and also um, who the partners and potential opportunities were for working on that effort. Um, so we also convened meetings around that same time to uh, begin talking to librarians from various countries um, to understand their needs and desires when it came to what data could be collected and what would be useful. Um, and that first engagement was in February of 2018 um, in Accra. And uh, we got a lot of information from that meeting, but I think one of the key things that we heard was um, a definite enthusiasm uh, around the idea of creating and collecting um, basic data that uh, especially could serve as a foundation for later data collection. Um, so based off of that meeting and uh, further conversations that we had later in 2018, we launched our first data collection platform and began um, gathering data from libraries. Um, and that was a very valuable experience. Um, where we learned a lot about some of the challenges when it came to collecting such data out about the effort and the process for verifying, um, verifying that data. Um, so with those lessons we learned, uh, we, we incorporated that into building a more robust platform uh, that had some additional capabilities and we also launched a new communication and outreach strategy that involved identifying and training uh, what we called our the in-country representatives or what we call the champions. Um, and through that, we were able to get a lot more participation um, and uh, a lot more data into that revised platform. Um, so to keep people up to date with that, we provided an update on our work um, to that point at the third AFLEA conference and fifth African Library Summit in May of 2019. Um, this also included an update based off of uh, additional information that we had heard from uh, 
from participants in various meetings and feedback over time. Um, and so in 2019, we also launched a new work stream that we called Development Stories. And so a key question in that work was to understand what types of data libraries can collect to better demonstrate their value as development partners. Um, and so to help answer that question, um, we undertook interviews with a range of staff at various development organizations to better understand what types of data they looked for in their partners um, and their perceptions of libraries as potential partners in development efforts. Um, so a lot of this information uh, in the interviews, many of the questions and sort of the overall um, focus was very similar and sort of built upon um, a similar survey that was conducted by Eiffel um, approximately a decade ago before we did this work. So um, all of this work is obviously iterative and builds on the, the um, previous work and we're um, always happy that uh, that we have uh, partners and colleagues who, who, who work with us on these things. Um, so we presented a summary of the findings from those interviews with the development staff at the fourth Athlea conference and sixth African library summit in May of 2021. Um, we, uh, in addition to producing a lot of um, academic oriented uh, papers, we also produced um, summaries of each of these reports that are downloadable from the Tasha website. Um, I can share those links directly with you uh, if you're interested. I'll share my email address um, at the end of the presentation and you can contact me um, or you can reach out to Stanley and um, he can always put you in touch with me. Um, so uh, at, the, at the African Library Summit in May of 2021, um, we did share some high level overview uh, from our findings, and I think they're a valuable piece to hear um, because they, they do come from external partners. And so when you're thinking about data, it's always um, good to hear what potential partners are thinking about. So two overarching findings were that, um, unfortunately, the awareness and perception of libraries as viable development partners was still very low among the people we interviewed. Um, responses also uh, that they shared with us conveyed that data needs for the organizations vary considerably. And I think just as important is, is that data alone is not enough to secure new partnerships. Um, so based off of all of this, we thought of a couple um, basic uh, or, or sort of uh, base level rep recommendations that we made to libraries as you're thinking about data. And I think they still uh, are true today. So one thing that we would say is that you should think about framing the work that you do in terms of connections to your local community and also any attention to uh, marginalized groups within your community and any past successes that you've had in implementing programs. Um, collect a variety of data if possible. Um, including quantitative data on library usage and user demographics. Um, and then I think another important piece of this, because as we said, data alone is not enough for those partnerships, um, continue to network and really think about how you can promote the library um, as, a as a community embedded institution um, and how it can serve as a hub for development resources, whether that's around space, um, data or research in the community itself. Um, so following this phase of work with the development organizations, we also um, wanted to gain a better understanding of some of the current data practices on the continent in regards to um, collection and use of data among libraries. So we conducted a survey about data practices in multiple countries to better understand both the type of data that libraries were currently collecting and what they do with that data. Um, one finding from that uh, survey was is that most libraries are already collecting some level of quantitative data around users and operations and um, linked to the interviews that we did with the development organization staff, that was something that they were interested in. So that's certainly a good 
a starting point for conversations with potential development partners that you can build on um, with those other facets when you talk about the work you're already doing. Um, the other finding that I'd highlight is, is that probably not a surprise, many organizations said that more training and supports needed in the analysis and dissemination of data to make it um, fully useful. Um, so for both of those uh, activities, we shared the findings through a series of webinars um, that Athlea uh, hosted and also had a uh, third webinar that included a set of panelists um, who discussed some of their interpretations of those findings. Uh, so with all the information from these meetings, from surveys, from interviews, um, and our experience working with the test versions of the platform, um, as Doreen mentioned in 2022, the Athlea team towards, um, turned towards scoping and building a platform uh, that would hopefully address most of the, uh, the challenges that we had had with the previous platforms um, that will collect, present, and disseminate um, data related to all types of libraries. So on a personal level, I'm just very excited to see what happens next with Alva um, and the engagement in collecting and sharing data among libraries and potential partners. Um, if you have any questions about any of the work that happened in Alva, any of the topics that I covered, um, and you wish to obtain any of the uh, resources, either presentations or summary reports or articles, um, please feel free to contact me. Um, and now I will uh, turn it over to Stanley. Thank you. Thank you very much, Grace. When before Stanley comes up, there's going to be a session for French participants tomorrow. So tomorrow at 12 o'clock GMT, there will be French session. And then on the 9th, there will be also Portuguese session. Stanley, you're welcome to take over. Thank you very much, Chris. Stanley. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I I hope you can cl clearly hear me. Let me. My name is Stanley, uh, research coordinator um, at AFLIA. I also handle communication matters here. Um, I'll, I'll quickly rush us all through the, the key functionalities of the platform we've been talking about. Um, I think before today, we've had a few articles, pushed a few articles out, trying to let people know what the platform is all about. And um, it, would, it was always an opportunity to have this major launch where everybody would uh, convene and then we can um, together take a look at some of the functionalities um, of, of this platform. I think um, a lot has been said already about the reason why this solution um, was put together. We, we really wanted to develop a system that can facilitate um, proper advocacy, in this case, data-driven advocacy, and then also support impact dissemination for libraries, because we know that um, when proper advocacy is done, and proper impact dissemination is done, uh, it would eventually result in favorable policies that can help develop the um, library sector. And of course, it will help to attract investments and partnerships um, from across board. And that's why um, under the project, the Alba project, uh, Tasha and Aflia together really felt so um, moved to have this solution. Um, over the years, as we interacted with libraries and librarians and library heads and various stakeholders, um, it became very obvious that um, this, this kind of platform or data solution um, is, is one thing that would help to promote the, the, the development of the sector, especially because we are going to help to bridge the gap um, in, in terms of the lack of data. Now, what we realized was that we had some databases that were existing, and uh, those that were existing were often limited either at the local level or the national level, or limited by a certain category of the library space or the, the library type. And then even in, in those databases that were existing, we had issues where uh, some of the databases were static. You, you, there was no clear plan as to revising the data that was there. A lot of them also were already outdated, outdated and quite a number of them 
um, even not available to the public at all. Uh, we saw all, all of these things as um, hampering disruption when it comes to uh, promoting advocacy through data. And then again, we also realized that when you come up to the regional or even the sub-regional level, there was not a platform that really um, um, integrates and then puts together information about the library sector or um, um, library locations that really would help to paint a better picture of what is happening on the African continent in terms of library development and impact. And, and that's why we put together this platform, uh, which is a dynamic in nature and sort of tries to respond to some of the critical issues that we identified when we wanted to put together a certain platform that responds to these issues. So uh, yeah, the platform as we have it has four key issues or four key features. Um, I won't talk too much about them because the next session will focus more on how to um, exploit all of these functionalities. But then the African Library Size Platform um, is a platform that helps you to explore library maps. Um, it helps you to contribute library data by yourself. It helps you to visualize the data that's on the platform. And of course, export library data um, for external use without restrictions, I must add. So um, yeah, in terms of contributing library data, uh, when you get to the platform, you would see uh, once you sign in, again, once you sign in, you have the opportunity to provide information about your library. And in this case, we are targeting those who are working in the libraries. And we're using the crowdsourcing method. In this case, wherever you are, as long as you're a librarian and your library is not represented on the map, you have the ability to provide the information about your library so that it gets represented on the platform. And then we have a robust workflow where any data that is submitted, um, there's a review process, there's a back and forth to ensure quality assurance and the data that is provided before it gets published. And the platform supports all kinds of um, libraries. So we have um, 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 public libraries and national libraries, the academic libraries, special libraries, community libraries. This system has all of this um, um, catered for all these types of libraries catered for. And then there's a mobile solution as well. We have a mobile app that is a dedicated data collection app. Um, and it has functionalities where even when you find yourself in a very poor internet space, you can input the information. And then as long as the system is able to track a good internet, it gets uploaded into the system. So um, yeah, that's with the bit about contributing library data and this absolutely democratizes information sharing about your library. Uh, and yeah, we'll talk about that eventually. So, and then another feature is about exploring library maps. When you go to the platform and you will see on the right-hand side an inset uh, of what happens on the platform. I, I don't want to go back and forth, so I have them as inserts so that you can see how the, the platform represents everything that I'm saying. So you have users who will be able to search um, specific libraries uh, according to the types. And then you can actually search also by status where you are in a position to know whether a particular library is in operation or um, temporarily closed or permanently closed. And you have features where you can toggle between the terrain, uh, map view and the satellite map view, zoom right in and see exactly the libraries and the information. And every node as you see and the figures mapped out there represent libraries and then you see the map legend that tells you each color corresponds with a particular type of library that helps you to know the locations as long uh, in addition to other information about those libraries the platform also helps you to visualize library data and this is also very important because apart from collecting the data we wanted uh, to create um, a utility where people cannot visualize the data and use it for yeah, reporting, um, communicating impact, communicating stories, uh, letting people know what is happening, and it makes it easier to also understand the data as it is. So you see on the on the right hand side is an example of what is happening in Ghana at the moment, uh, according to the data that is existing on the platform. You are able to um, filter according to library type. You can filter by country, and then of course whatever enhances your interest 
you are able to just focus on that and the system will generate this um, information for you. You can, you can check the country profiles. You're able to also compare with other countries and it, it tells you some comparative stories if you need to. And all of these charts as we are, as I'm talking about, all these charts are downloadable. You can download them and then add them to your reports, uh, share them wherever you want to share them and then um, create more buzz about what is happening on the platform. Another feature is um, exporting library data because we know that this platform, apart from creating an opportunity for people to send and make sure that their libraries are represented on the platform uh, uh, with a continental dimension, they must be able to use the data itself for other, other things, of course. And so in an open system, you can log into the system and then find out what data is existing about libraries in a particular country, let's say Egypt. And then once you sort it out, you can even further go down and filter um, a particular uh, library type of your choice. And it's going to generate the data for you. And you will be able to download that uh, it gets into your system and you can use it for further analysis as you wish. Um, then another feature uh, would be is, is about the open AI system that we have in place. Uh, and this may be a bit technical, but I think it deserves mention um, for, for all those who are here that uh, are either working with the library associations or the national libraries or any other um, library stakeholders because the system is in such a way that you can actually take advantage of the open AI, uh, sorry, the open API and extract information that is existing on this platform, have it embedded on your own um, website for free. And let me just give an example. So there is a, there is a Ghana Library website or Ghana Library Authority website. And this platform, they are able to, their IT team will be able to just pick the relevant quotes from here embed it on their own platform and the system will just show them the distribution of libraries and the location of libraries on their platform without even having to come here. And that kind of integration is also critical for us because we want people to adopt this and see the relevance of how integrating this with um, the various existing platforms and websites that they have would be helpful in communicating information about their libraries. And of course, we also have is a multifunctional, uh, multilingual, platform where you can, um, English speakers can use, the French speakers can use, the Portuguese can use, the Arabic can use. And once you, you toggle between the language, um, you are in the position to receive all the information that are on the platform in the language of choice, um, as you have it here. All right, so in wrapping up, I would say that um, the, the idea was to create this significant resource that can be used for advocacy and for the promotion of um, 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 issues about library, uh, stories about library, the data about libraries, so that um, the proper visibility and impact of these libraries are well known to relevant stakeholders. So now at the moment, librarians are empowered to make their own libraries visible wherever you are, um, as long as you find yourself at the library and your library is not represented on the map, or on the platform, now you can do it by yourself and tell, tell us some information about your library. And so the, the populating of the platform is a shared responsibility. Uh, I think the executive director made emphasis on that. Um, this needs everyone right from the librarian to the library head, to the regional librarian, to the provincial librarian, to the national librarian, to the uh, National Library President and executives, everybody, every stakeholder, because this platform has been created for the benefit of everyone without restrictions. <laughs> um, in, in, for sustainable data collection and updates, uh, AFLIA is going to be instituting periodic virtual and in-person campaigns where would would give people the opportunity to revise data that is on the platform. And that's another very powerful feature. Uh, the data that is existing on this system is not static. And so at every point in time, it can be revised by anybody as long as they find themselves within the country um, or the scope that the, the particular library is within. And then of course, we also have opportunities where anyone 
who may be coming across the platform for the very first time would get the chance to uh, represent their libraries on the platform. And so again, um, this requires constant and continual collaboration between um, AFLIA and every other stakeholder within the sector. Let's accept and know that this platform was created for us, by us, and we need to make it work. So thank you very much. I would end there. I won't want to spend too much time on this because there is another session where I'll go into details on exactly how to use the platform. Thank you very much. With this, and then that's the website. Uh, I'll, I'll paste them in the chats, and then we can talk more when we get to the orientation science. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Tani, for the insightful presentation. Without much ado, they help me welcome Dr. Helena Asamo Hassan to launch the site for us. Mommy, you're welcome. Please take over. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Doreen, for this. Um, the way I look at uh, the, what I said earlier on is still related to the fact that we need, this is a very good project, which is going to help the communities that we save, as we have said. So essentially, as I have said earlier on, the African Library Sites platform is critical to the visibility and impact of libraries, especially on the continent of Africa. And I'm really honored to declare that the African Library Sites platform is duly launched. I'm hopeful that this is the beginning of a brighter future for libraries and literacy for the people of Africa. We will continue to work with all other types of libraries to ensure that more libraries are mapped. Long live the African Library Sites Platform. Long live AFLIA. Long live the African Library Sector. I thank you. So like I said, the African Library Sites Platform is duly launched. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. This is good news for all of us in Africa. It is time for you as a librarian to do your work, ensure that you put your library on this map. Hey, as a librarian or as a librarian, if your library is not visible, there is no way you can partner with anybody. We all know that lack of information is lack of visibility. Like Dr. Ankem will say, if you don't say I am, nobody will say thou art. And for me, this is good news. It is a step in the right direction. We are grateful to all the, to our partners, to all the champions, and to all those who made time to be with us here for this lunch. Remember, the site is there for you. It is for you and it is for us. Ensure that your library location is on that map. Don't exempt yourself. If you don't do anything about it, you are doing your library a disservice. Be visible at the global level and let everybody know what you are doing. Thank you very much.